Welcome back to Natural Language Processing. Uh, today we're going to start a new section on uh, text summarization, which is one of the most interesting problems in natural language processing. So here's a very simple introduction to text summarization. We want to be able to get as input a set of documents, for example, about health. So here we have a bunch of sentences about eating vegetables and fruits and the reasons why they're healthy. I mean, very often users don't have the time to read uh, a lot of details and we want to be able to produce a summary of them uh, for two reasons. One, so that they can read the summary instead of the original documents if they don't have enough time or uh, even more realistically, uh, to show them the summary so that they get an idea what the document is all about. And then once they read the summary, they can decide whether they want to go and read uh, the full set of documents. So in this example, the summary that we would like to get, although there's no Q &A, there's no summarization system currently that can do this, we want to get a short summary like this. Eating vegetables is healthy. So this is a very extreme example of text summarization, which as I said is not practically feasible at this point, but there are many instances of existing summarization systems that work and produce uh, meaningful summaries that are actually useful for users. So let's look at some examples, uh, what kind of summaries we want to be able to produce. One is new summarization. We want to get, for example, a cluster of documents that are related to each other and produce a short summary like the one that appears in the middle of the page of everything that happened in this uh, set of related documents. We can also produce book summaries. So here's uh, an example. We can have something like Cliff's Notes, which probably everybody knows about. Uh, Cliff's Notes are uh, short uh, descriptions of what happens in some large book plus some additional comments about the characters and the plot and the techniques used in the book. Here's a funny example. There's a website called Book a Minute where uh, people have uh, uh, spent time to summarize famous books into really, really short uh, versions. So here's one. Can you guess which book it is? Some boys crash on an island and then Ralph says repeatedly, we need a fire. They make a fire, it goes out. Then this happens a few times. Then Jack says, forget the fire, let's kill each other. The other boys say, yeah, and they do kill each other, the end. So this is again a tongue-in-cheek summary of a famous book. Can you guess which one it is? Yeah, so this book is uh, obviously Lord of the Flies by Golding, and it was uh, outer condensed, to use their term, by David Parker and Samuel Stoddard on rinkworks.com. So more examples of summaries, movie summaries. So you have something like Titanic and uh, short summaries of it. For example, beginning with genuine footage of the departure of the Titanic on its fateful voyage, this epic movie tells the events of that tragic night from the perspective of fictional survivor roles. As an old lady of 100, she recounts her story of duty, love, and disaster to a salvage crew searching for a lost gem. And obviously there are many different summaries that you can produce for a given movie. Obviously if you go to a website like IMDB, you can get hundreds of summaries written by different people. And as you can see, the summaries often can look very different from one another and yet uh, have the same goal, namely to capture the gist of the movie or book or other piece of work. Another type of summaries are search engine snippets. Uh, the difference between those and the ones we looked at previously is that those are query based. So search engines return uh, little passages from the retrieved documents that are most similar to the query. So here's an example. I did a search for uh, Cloud Atlas, which is a science fiction book. And as you can see, the top hits that are returned here by Google are all accompanied by short passages or snippets and the words uh, Cloud Atlas and the name of the author are highlighted. There are many different genres of summaries. Uh, we have also headlines. Uh, so a headline can be construed as a very short summary of a document, of a news story, for example. An outline uh, can be produced for many different genres of documents. It could be an outline of a book, an outline of a meeting, an outline of an encyclopedia entry, a paper, and so on. There can also be minutes of meetings, uh, biographies of people, for example, in obituaries or uh, just plain biographies. They can be abridgments. Uh, so abridgments of books are typically shorter versions uh, for uh, different audiences, perhaps for younger children or for people who don't have that much time. 
They can be sound bites, which are just some small uh, snippets of audio from an interview or from some event. They can be movie summaries, chronologies, and so on. And uh, I want to give credit for this taxonomy to Indrajit Mani and May Mark Maybury uh, from the 99 paper. So what types of summaries can there be? Uh, well, we already saw some of them. But how do we distinguish between the different types of summaries? Well, one of the factors is what's the input. Is it a single document or multiple documents? Is it a grammatical text or not? What's the output? Is it uh, a grammatical sentences or perhaps just a few keywords? Is it speech or text? What's the purpose? Is it uh, intended to replace uh, the original document or is it just indicative? In which case uh, it just tells you what the original document is about, but doesn't give you all of the details about it. There can also be something called critical summaries, where you're summarizing, for example, a book or a movie, but you're also giving some uh, subjective uh, information about how you feel about it. The form uh, can be either extractive or abstractive. Uh, so extracts are usually representative paragraphs or sentences or phrases from a document. Whereas abstracts can be uh, reformulated in uh, different, using different words and are in general, to quote from a Pace paper from 1990, uh, a concise summary of the central subject matter of a document. The other dimensions to take into account, whether the document summary is based on a single or multiple document input, uh, the context is very important. Is it query specific? For example, uh, how is this document related to, let's say, trade talks uh, versus generic? I mean, what's a generically uh, a good summary of this document regardless of the context? Okay, so uh, a typical summarization system can have up to three stages. Uh, typically, there are the following. The first stage is content identification. So given your input document, you have to determine what information you want to preserve and pass on to the next stage. So that could be uh, some specific sentences or named entities or facts. The next thing is how to organize this information. Do you want to combine information from multiple documents? Do you want to preserve entire sentences? Uh, do you want to reorder them? And finally, you have realization. So in realization, you have to deal with some additional issues. For example, if you take two documents and you pull one sentence from each of them, they may not read nicely next to each other. So it's possible that the realization stage would include the generation of some connectives, for example, for example, or therefore, or in contrast, so that the sentences that came from different sources can be uh, tied together more coherently. Or realization can include uh, the generation of some referring expression, such as this person or uh, he or she. So here's an example of an extractive summarizer. It takes as input a new story. As you can see, the new story consists of about 10 sentences. And then we want the summary to include the most important facts that are uh, underlined and uh, shown in red here. Uh, you can see that a purely extractive summarizer would just underline those uh, passages and sentences and present that as the summary. So in this case, realization is practically non-existent because we are just preserving information from the original documents as it appears in exactly the same order. Uh, one important thing to mention here is that extractive summarization can come in two different kinds. Uh, the first kind is where you have only full sentences, uh, like for example, the last sentence in this example here, or you can have portions of sentences. That still counts as an extractive summarizer, even if you're not extracting the entire sentences. So it turns out that summarization is something that humans have been doing for years. For example, there are professional abstractors that read scientific articles and create, create manual abstracts of those that go into different uh, bibliometric databases. And here's a nice quote from uh, many years ago, from 40 years ago by Ashworth uh, about what professional abstractors do. Uh, quote unquote, to take an original article, understand it and pack it neatly into a nutshell without loss of substance or clarity presents a challenge which many have felt worth taking up for the joys of achievement alone. These are the characteristics of an art form. So this uh, passage very clearly indicates that summarization is uh, a very difficult task that humans uh, may or may not be good at 
but that it involves uh, some sufficient, some very significant amount of craftsmanship. Okay, let's now focus on some specific types of summaries, for example, extractive summarization. So as I mentioned before, extractive summarization is about selecting Unix from the original text and presenting them in the order in which they appear there. The units are usually sentences. Uh, in one of the most common scenarios, there is no simplification of the sentences allowed, so you're not allowed to skip any portions of them or replacing words with others. No rewriting is allowed. So it turns out that for some genres of documents, there is a very important baseline that is very hard to beat for extractive summarization, and that is the so-called lead-based uh, baseline. So in lead-based summaries, you have a certain amount of uh, text that you're allowed to produce as part of the summary. For example, let's say the equivalent of two sentences or five sentences. So the baseline is to extract as many sentences from the beginning of the document as you are allowed to produce in the output. So two or five in this example. It turns out for many evaluation metrics and for many genres of text, the first few sentences of the document are in fact the most informative sentences. Well, luckily for researchers in this field, this is not the case in most of the other genres. So uh, it's possible to come up with techniques that are even better. So we're going to now continue with some additional considerations about summarization in the next segment.